So the big question is, and has always been, lobectomy or segmentectomy uh, for tumours, which is best? And before JCOG 0802 and CalGB, uh, the studies were terrible. There were actually more meta-analyses than there were studies. Everybody wanted to know the answer, but didn't do the trial. And so what was the controversy? Why were we angsting about this so much? Well, we all wanted to know when you should do a lobectomy. It's fine if it's five centimetres in size, but as you get smaller, it just seemed a bit overkill to be taking the whole lobe. And then in the absolute tiniest, you know, when do you do a wedge? And which patients are suitable for what? This is our main uh, procedure for lung cancer resection. We really wanted to know. First of all, let's establish some ground rules. Well, anybody, certainly over 20 millimetres, must have a lobectomy. There is absolutely no doubt. There's no jury out on this. JCOG and CalGB excluded these patients. And so really, you know, if you're getting near to 20 millimetres, you know, a couple of millimetres away, because clinical measurement is not the same as pathological measurement, I would probably say once you're getting to about 18 millimetres, it is just a lobectomy. Both studies excluded anyone over 20 millimetres, so we're only talking about patients less than 20 millimetres in size. We're also not talking about the tiddlers. You know, you've got this five millimetre solid lesion. You've got this uh, uh, nine millimetre lesion with no histology. You know, are we going to impact the patient's survival by not doing a lobectomy in these patients? Well, there actually have been quite a lot of studies in these teeny tiny little nodules, all these GGOs, because uh, that's important. Uh, uh, and uh, having a solid to GGO tumour ratio of less than 50%, you know, there's loads of good studies saying a wedge is absolutely fine really low levels of spread to to the lymph nodes so the teeny tinies don't worry you can still carry on with those so these huge studies, and JCOG is by far the best, uh, CalGB as well as out there, uh, we're looking at that middle ground, you know, the one centimetre to two centimetre tumours. They were the really controversial ones. They were the ones that we wanted to do by segment, but was it safe? So this is an incredible trial. Uh, it was set up uh, with the aim of 1,100 patients being randomised uh, to segmentectomy or lobectomy in the less than two centimetre range and it began in 2009. It's really important to tell you guys who the patients are. Firstly, they've got to be fit enough for a lobectomy and segmentectomy. If you're not fit enough, then have a segmentectomy, obviously. So they've got to be fit enough for both. But secondly, you've got to do a systematic, not sampling lymph node dissection. You've got to have a big margin between your tumour uh, and the resection margin. It says... Um, it's got to be bigger than the maximum tumour diameter. So if it's 11 millimetres, it need to be, needs to be 11 millimetres. Or just as a general rule, 20 millimetres. That's a big resection margin. And, uh, and also, uh, if you don't get anything this close, you've got to confirm that histologically. You've got to send your sample down to your pathologist to prove it before you can complete that segmentectomy and not move on to lobe. Uh, also, you've got to send your, your lymph nodes down to pathologists pathology because if they're positive you've got to convert to a lobe. So this was a strict strict study uh, and if you're going to replicate this you've got to do the same strictness with your segmentectomy. Super important. Now I've had loads of people uh, emailing, whatsapping, talking about this. It's literally caused a genuine bombshell in our community. Everybody's been panicking about this. Oh my God, it, how come I can't do a segmentectomy? You can. You can still do segmentectomies on the patients I've just highlighted. Metastases, great for segmentectomies over lobe when they're too deep for a wedge. Not fit for a lobectomy, do a segment. Of course, the big tumours, you have to do a lobe. Middle lobe you have to do a lobe. If you think you've got N1, you have to do a lobe. If you can't get frozen section, you have to do a lobe really. If you can't get a good margin, you have to do a lobe. If you've got terrible lung fibrosis, maybe you can't do a lobe. So don't freak about those. And remember, um, the, uh, the, the solid to GGO ratio had to be more than 0.5 in this study. 
So what's this study all about? It's these tumours basically between about one centimetre and 18, 19 millimetres. It was officially 20 in the trial, but you know, when you get close, uh, I think you really should just be going for a, a lobe. Uh, and this is what we're talking about. In the five year findings, they found that segmentectomy was better. There is our, our bombshell dropper, Hesau Asamura, first author of the trial, uh, giving these results. The massive results when they came out were that segmentectomy was mic drop better than lobectomy not equivalent better 94 percent five-year over, uh, overall survival versus 91 three percent mortality advantage p-value 0.0082 that's eight in a thousand chance that we got this wrong that is massive it's saying do segmentectomy of course we all rushed to segmentectomy cheering for hisao asamura now, this was a bit of a downer on us all because it did show a benefit in lung function of about 3.5% at a year, but, and it also was significant, but the study said we're looking to find more than a 10% uh, benefit and it did not achieve that benefit. Now, why did they say 10%? Because that's what we think is a clinically important difference uh, or a clinically significant difference so we don't really think 3.5 percent is clinically significant so this trial did not find better lung function in the segmentectomy trial that is super important as we move on to the debate coming up so relapse free survival was equivalent no difference but here's the other important thing to say. In the five-year findings, there was more local regional recurrence in the segmentectomy arm than the lobectomy arm. The numbers were 38 versus 17. The percentages were 7 versus 3. It's doubled. You've got double the recurrence. Now, this didn't translate into increased mortality or, or recurrence-free survival, but it was there in the figures. But we were whooping and cheering, we loved the study, and we were rocketed to segmentectomy for any tumours less than 18 millimetres based on this trial. Now we do have to give a big shout out to Nasser al Torki's trial, the CalGB trial or the al Torki trial. Uh, he also did a great study in the New England Journal of Medicine, huge time frame, big numbers and great findings. Basically, we were cheering in the aisles as he presented that there was no difference in survival if you did a segmentectomy versus lobectomy. There was no difference in survival, in disease-free survival as well. Um, we all went a little bit quiet when we saw that there was a little bit more local regional recurrence, but it wasn't too big. 45 in the segmentectomy or wedge group versus 35 in the lobar resection group, but that didn't come out significant. And we all went a little bit quiet when he found there was only a 2% difference in lung function between segmentectomy or wedge uh, and lobectomy. So what did this study find? Well, it didn't find that your breathing got better. It found a non-significant increase in local regional recurrence and equivalence otherwise. Whoop whoop! We can carry on with segmentectomies. Now, the 10-year findings of JCOG have previously been presented at the AATS. So, AATS 2024, they presented an abstract. Now, it did show that the, the um, overall mortality and recurrence-free mortality was converging. There was still a difference, but it was small and it was now crossing the confidence interval, so it became non-significant. The recurrence-free survival, small difference and now not significant. So what are we left with? Well, we're now left with no overall or recurrence-free survival difference, but we've got this doubling in local relapse and we have got the no difference in lung function. Uh, and uh, and the reason that we used to have a benefit for lobectomy was other diseases, other cancers in the lobectomy group, which sounded really strange to all of us. So let's get into the mic drop moment. 
First of all, who did the mic drop? Well, Hisao Asamura is one of the most senior thoracic surgeons in the world. Um, he's probably going to be an IASLC president. He has been uh, vice presidents of societies. He's run uh, and whole conferences. Uh, he is a huge figure and he is in charge of uh, JCOG 0802. So he is the main man. And let's go through these bombshell slides that he is now presenting and that he has just presented this year uh, at the AME conference. Number one, the difference in survival between lobectomy and segmentectomy, which was significant at five years, has disappeared at 10 years. There is no difference in survival between lobectomy and segmentectomy. Number two, there's no difference in recurrence-free survival between lobectomy and segmentectomy at 10 years. Number three, really importantly, the recurrence of lung cancer is more common in segmentectomy than lobectomy. And it's quite a difference, 71 versus 47 patients. And secondly, the local regional recurrence is more common, segmentectomy 62, lobectomy 32, doubling your risk of local regional recurrence if you do a segment over a lobe in these patients. Next finding, so there's no difference in the non-malignant disease. You don't cause more respiratory disease, you don't cause more cardiovascular disease or anything between lobectomy and segmentectomy. So this goes to say that you haven't harmed the patient in doing a lobectomy over a segmentectomy. You haven't changed their lung function, you haven't changed their respiratory disease, you haven't changed cardiovascular disease, you haven't changed anything. So you haven't helped the patient by uh, doing doing a segmentectomy over a lobectomy. So there's no difference between lobectomy and segmentectomy for lung cancer death. Um, and, uh, and this actually goes to show that there's no possibility that segmentectomy is in some weird way a better operation uh, at all than a lobectomy. Now, we were all cheering that we thought it was superior. So why were there more deaths in the lobectomy arm? Well, it was other cancers, which was a really weird quirk. I think we all found it was weird. Um, Eric Lim wrote into The Lancet, but it wasn't accepted. Um, we all scratched our heads, uh, but didn't really understand it. Well, it's gone away now. The differences have gone away. And uh, Hisao Asimura, in charge of the trial, cannot explain why there were more cancers in the lobectomy uh, arm and they're just saying it might have just happened by chance. So here it is. This is the big final comments and this is enormous. There is no survival benefit for segmentectomy over lobectomy. It might not be worse but uh, there's no benefit. There's more recurrence. There's no functional benefit at all in doing a segmentectomy over a lobectomy. So JCOG are going to say that at 10 years, the treatment of choice is lobectomy for these tumors. His final slide, which is enormous, could not be clearer. Do not do a segmentectomy for these patients that have a solid tumour, less than 20 millimetres, biopsy proven hopefully, although not all, uh, uh, even if they're small, even if they're peripherally located, you're going to increase the recurrence free survival, you're not benefiting them at all. They feel that their own paper is misleading, they apologise for this, but they are not saying it's okay to carry on to do a segmentectomy. So this is huge, this is massive, this is practice changing, uh, and uh, I thought I needed to get you up to speed on this. So what are the implications? Well, the implications are massive. We need to do more than more lobectomies than segmentectomies. Do we need to do another trial? It's going to take a decade. It's going to take more than a decade. It'll take 15 years to repeat this so maybe we can't do a trial can we go and do some cohort studies well that totally negates the equal playing field that a randomized trial has put here why aren't we believing uh, p-values less than 0.05 for, for survival well because it doesn't have any clinical plausibility. You know, the reason a lobectomy had more mortality was other cancers. How on earth can taking a bit more lung 
uh, or not take a bit more lung protect you uh, from having other cancers as your mortality. It's just not biologically plausible. Uh, so, so this actually has major ramifications for, for when we interpret even randomised trials. So this is huge. This is going to rumble on for months and months, but this should be practice changing for all thoracic surgeons around the world.